Sylvanas. Here comes the second pitch. Another foul tip. Count now is going to be 0-2 on March Count Venice. Little ground ball to the first baseman. He's going to take it himself for the first out. Up next is going to be number 16, Spencer Kelly. Adam, what do you think about this weather out here today? Tell you what, we looked up and got some nice weather as long as the rain holds off. It's pretty cool. And it looks like it may hold off for right now. Spencer Kelly just hits a foul ball off the tin roof of the Bruce Trojan dugout. strike. Here comes the second pitch. And it's a ball about a little bit inside, a little bit low. And definitely it's a pretty good temperature outside if the sun will stay away and if it doesn't start raining we'll be in for a pretty nice game. Ball low to Spencer Kelly. He swings at the pitch, he hits a ground ball. Third baseman comes across, he's gonna throw and he's gonna get him out at first for the second out. Up next is number 50, Casey Deaton, batting in the third spot. We got two outs here in the top of the first inning. He foul tips the first pitch. On the mound for Calvin City is Parker Jones. Really sort of having a slow start here as he struggled early, but he's able to get two outs on just swinging and just easy throw outs at first base. Casey swings at the inside pitch and kind of inside out swings. Little blooper to the second baseman, throws him out at first to retire the side of the top of the first inning. Give you a rundown of our sponsors of today's baseball game is Bruce Telephone Company, Waller Incorporated Warehouser, Step Saver Pharmacy, Weeks Big Star, Kathy's Cozy Kitchen of Pittsburgh, Bruce Family Medical Center, Fred's Pharmacy, Kelwood Company, Factory Outlet, Parker Brothers Trucking, TDS Telecom, Calhoun Apparel, Bruce Furniture, a Klausner, Corp Klausner Company. On the mound for Calhoun City Trojans, Bruce Trojans, excuse me, is going to be Bill Malone, number Waiting for Mr. Malone to get his warm-up pitches in before the leadoff batter for the bottom half of the first inning.
leading off for the Calhoun City Wildcats in the bottom of the first inning is going to be number 24, who's pitching for them, uh, Parker Jones. He's batting 250 this season. First pitch, uh, low and inside of the dirt for ball one. Comes with the chains up a little bit high and inside. The count now is 2-0. Two, oh. two balls, no strikes. Another change up. That one looked kind of high, but they got a strike on him right there. Maybe going with the new professional strike zone here in this studio varsity game, a more vertical strike zone, less horizontal. He swings at that uh, outside fastball. Count now two and two, two balls and two strikes. To Parker Jones, number 24, the pitcher. We've got a pitcher versus pitcher here. And he swings that pitch off the pitcher's glove. Second baseman boots. Uh, bobbles the ball and first baseman catches it but was uh, away from the bag trying to get the wild throw and just couldn't get the tag down on Parker Jones. Up next for the Wildcats is going to be number 16, Josh Ferguson. Out of the box getting a sign from the coach. Steps into the box. Check in the runner. Swings at a high inside pitch for strike one. Josh Ferguson this season is batting a 278. The second pitch. It's a low outside, got the corner. It's going to be strike two. The count now is no balls, two strikes to Josh Ferguson, number 16. The coach dispensing with signals and just letting everybody know what the sign is. He fouls on the bunt on his third strike. That's going to be the first out of the bottom half. That was kind of a crazy call from the coach to give the player a bunt, bunt signal on the third strike. A little bit of miscommunication there. Next up to bat is going to be number 10, Traverius Armstrong. He's batting 273 this season. Swings at the first pitch, fly ball caught by the third baseman. Thought about throwing it over to first to get the second out, but decided not to. Next up to bat is going to be number 17, David Artberry. He's got a good batting average, uh, probably while he's batting fourth. He's got a batting average of 400, even. Low and inside fastball, caught the corner for strike one. Still got a runner on first base here in the bottom of the first inning with two outs. Tried to bunt that one, fouled it back to the screen. That's going to be his second strike, the count now. No balls and two strikes to David Artberry, the cleanup hitter. <clears throat> Pitcher steps off. It's going to take some time to think about it. Runner goes on the pitch, he fouls it back to the screen. Probably a hit and run call on that one right there. The count stays at 0 and 2, and the runner must go back to first base now. David Artberry, an eighth grader, batting 400 in the cleanup spot for the Calhoun City Wildcats. Runner goes again, a low pitch in the dirt, throw down to second. That bounces past the shortstop, and he's going to move to third. The throw's there, but he's just there in time. Slides into third base. So now we got a runner at third base, David Artberry, number 17, up to bat with two strikes, two outs in the bottom of the first inning. Like Craig Dixon that time, had a little trouble getting his mask off, which sort of 
threw off his timing on his throw, which really the shortstop should have been there to get that one, but instead it went into center field. and the He gets called down on the third strike. I don't know why he didn't swing at that pitch. It was right down the pipe. So we, in the bottom of the first inning, the Calhoun City Wildcats get no runs on no hits, one error, and one man left on base. We're going to take a break right here now before the top of the second inning. All right, we're going to join the game again in the top of the second inning, the game between the Calhoun City Wildcats and the Bruce Trojans. Here is the top of the second inning. Your batter is number seven, Marshall Bailey. The first pitch from Parker Jones. He swings at it, hits a little grounder to the first baseman, fields it cleanly, steps on first base for the first out. So far in the first inning, this game has been a pitcher's duel. Both pitchers doing a good job to throw strikes to get the other players to hit ground balls so that their defense can work behind them. Up next is going to be number 14, Barry Logan. And the pitch. Oh, he hits a screamer up the middle. That's going to be a base hit for Logan. Right, you get the ball into second base. He's going to have to stay at first. So the first hit of the ball game by Barry Logan. Up next is going to be number 20, Matt Fulton. With a runner on first base and one out in the top of the second inning. And the first pitch. He swings at it and fouls that straight up. Catcher's going to get under that one. And he gets the second out. Barry Logan faked like he was going to go to the second, and the catcher threw it down there to try and keep him from going. That's going to be two outs on the top of the second inning for the Trojans. Up next is going to be number 15, who is not on the list. And the runner goes. The throw down to second, off to the left. He's going to be into second safely. And the next pitch with the runner at second. Nice pitch. That was a strike right down the middle. Like a low changeup. The count now. I believe it's two and one. One and one. One ball, one strike. Logan at second base. Parker Jones for this pitch. He swings at a high pitch. He thought he struck out, but that was only a second strike. All right, we've identified this better. He's going to be number 15, Colby Hillhouse. He's got two strikes and one ball on him. Bray Logan at second base. He swings at an inside pitch, hits a fly ball. Center fielder fields it for the third out in the top of the second inning. And a quick rundown of our sponsors of the Calhoun City Brews matchup today would be Brews Telephone Company. Warehouser, Step Saver Pharmacy, Weeks, Big Star, Bruce, Kathy's Cozy Kitchen, Bruce Family Medical Center, Fred's Pharmacy, Kelwood Company, Parker Brothers Trucking, TDS Telecom, Calhoun Apparel, and Bruce Furniture, a Klausner Company. We're going to take a short break right here before the bottom of the second inning, and we'll be right back with your matchup between Calhoun City Wildcats and the Trojans from Bruce. All right, we're back with the bottom of the second inning between the Calhoun City Wildcats and the Bruce Trojans. Up to bat next for Calhoun City is going to be number 23. Another person we don't have a number for. The first pitch is going to be a strike from the pitcher, number five, 
Bill Malone. The next pitch is a little bit inside for a ball one. The count now one ball and one strike. That's a low ball down into the dirt. The count two balls and one strike. Here in the bottom of the second inning. The next pitch from Malone. It was a high strike and the batter swung at the ball and fouled it back to the fence. Count now even, two balls and two strikes, Adam. Got a heck of a pitcher's duel going here. Yeah, we got a pretty good game here between Malone and Jones. Your score right now is zero to zero, and as you said, it's just been a pitcher duel the whole way through. Really no, only one hit that we've really seen really so far has been a good one by Barry Logan, that little screamer up the middle. But no, the, nobody else has ever been able, really been able to get their bat started and get any offense stirred up. And there the Bruce Trojans get their first out in the bottom of the second inning with a little grounder to the first baseman who steps on first to get the out. The next batter is going to be number 22, Josh Langston. First pitch is going to be a ball to Josh Langston. Ball two to Josh Langston, an inside pitch. Bill Malone is doing a pretty good job to get another team to hit grounder so his defense can play behind him. And that's what you like to see in a, a baseball game is not so much the pitchers overpowering the other teams, but as you see a foul ball back to the light pole. <laughs> almost came down and hit us on the head. But that's what you like to see in a baseball game, not so much the pitchers overpowering the other team, but just letting the defense play behind him and getting the good pitches to get uh, ground balls and fly balls. There's a low ball in the dirt. The count now is going to go to three and one. Here in the bottom of the second inning between Calhoun City and Bruce. There's a strike. We got a full count now to number 22, Josh Langston, who's batting 333 this year. He hits a grounder down the third baseline, just fouled, just by a few inches. The count's going to remain full as the left fielder goes down to get that loose ball and throw it into the infield. Adam, I'm not familiar with these two teams. Tell me, how uh, is this a rival or is it just like a normal game? That's right here. I guess you could say the cross county rivalry, real big. Yeah, that's what everyone always says. You can just throw out the records here. It's just like these two teams have really never played each other. And each team's gonna come out and try their best just to beat each other just for the bragging rights. Cause everybody on this team basically knows everybody, and they'll see each other on the weekend. Just you know, you, just the thrill of having to brag, saying that who come out on top over the weekend is just what they're playing for here. There, as you see, Josh Langston with a screamer line drive hit past the shortstop. We're gonna give him a hit on that one. He stops at first base because the outfielders did a good job to get the ball in before he could get some extra bases off that hit. Up next is going to be number 30, Ronaldo Moore, a big guy. He swings at the first pitch for strike one. As we've got Josh Langston, a runner at first base, and Ronaldo Moore batting. Bill Morgan is your pitcher here in the bottom second inning contest between the Calhoun City Wildcats and the Bruce Trojans. Count now one ball and one strike to Moore as Langston leads off first. A strike down the dirt. The catcher blocks it, bounces over to his left, and Josh Langston is going to move to second base. Ronaldo Moore up the bat with a count of two balls and one strike. Josh Langston at second base. Bill Malone, the pitcher, and a high fastball for ball three. There's a strike. Ronaldo Moore lets the strike go by. He's going to make the, let the count get full now with Josh Langston at second base. A good base hit here will score a run for the Calhoun City Wildcats. And the next pitch, he swings, 
pops it up. Langston hurrying back to second, and he's back in time to be safe. So Ronaldo Moore pop flies to the shortstop for the second out in the bottom of the second inning. Josh Langston remains at second base. We've got two outs. Up to bat number three, Dennis Spencer. I'll tell you what, Kyle City was real fortunate that time as Langston just took off almost as if it was two outs. He was able to get back in enough time for the uh, shortstop was able to put the tag on him or touch second base, but that would have been a, I guess you could say, blooper double play. Ball one comes into Dennis Spencer there. Spencer batting 429 on the season. Pitch outside corner gets the strike. The count now one ball, one strike to Dennis Spencer as Josh Langston leads out second base. Again, all you want from your batter here is uh, put the ball in play, get a base hit, let score some runs, get this game going. He swings at that pitch. It's going to give him strike two. He took a healthy cut at that one. Yeah, really just trying to really just hit the ball too hard that time. Really, I guess looking at it at a golf perspective, really didn't take too his eye off the ball. Just sort of should have just swung through it smoothly, just made contact and hope for the best. Fouls that one back to the screen. He's going to stay at two strikes. You see that a lot in young players, especially in high school and junior high players who will uh, try and swing hard and, you know, trying to get a little bit of fame and fortune or whatever from hitting the ball over the fence. But really in, in this age group, all you got to do is put the ball in play and let things happen. Yeah, I guess we can say, thank Mark McGuire and Sammy Sosa for that as they put on a thriller last, last season. Everybody wants to be like the pros now. And the pitch inside almost hits Dennis Spencer. That's going to bring the count to two and two, two balls and two strikes. Here in the bottom of the second inning, as Josh Langston leads off second base. Pitcher number five, Bill Malone for the Bruce Trojans. Spencer hits a high fly ball to straightaway center field. Caught for the third out in the bottom of the second inning. And with that, we will go to a break. All right, we're back here with the top of the third inning with your contest between the Calhoun City Wildcats and the Trojans from Bruce. Uh, still no score here in the top of the third. Uh, up to bat first for the Trojans is going to be number eight, Wiley Ferguson. The first pitch from Jones. Low in the dirt for ball one. definitely looks like we might get some weather in here, Adam, but it's just holding off and holding up. It may just hold off the rest of the night. It would be nice if it did. Park, uh, Parker Jones and Bill Malone really right now having trouble keeping the ball up in the strike zone. Everything's been low, which is making the batters go rich for them, which has caused more base hit, I mean, grounders, as you see there, for the easy out as their defense is backing them up behind them, as you said. Ferguson grounds out to the first baseman for the first out here in the top of the third. The next batter's going to be number 24. Craig Dixon. And the first pitch from Jones to Dixon. Up in the strike zone, swings at it, strike one. Kind of pulled his hip out on that one, trying to hit it down the left field line. Got to keep your hip, your hip and your front side in there and explode everything at the right time and hit it right up the middle for a base hit. And the second pitch from Jones. Low curveball, he swings at it for strike two. Looks like Dixon just sort of running away as he swings, sort of falling away from the ball. Definitely looks like he's trying to be a pull hitter, even his open stance to begin with. He strides in and he pulls his front shoulder out on that curveball. A young, a young player really has no chance to hit a curveball. You pull your front side out, so he's going to, he just strikes out on a curveball for that one. It's going to be the second out. Bill Malone's up to bat the pitcher, number five. The curveball, he turns his head. He thought it was going to hit him. It just curved right across the inside corner of the plate for strike one. And the next pitch from Jones to Malone, the two pitchers. He hits a fly ball towards left center. The shortstop going back. Oh, it drops in the hole. We're going to give him a base hit on that one. He's going to have to stop at first, though, because the ball didn't go very much farther than the infield. So the ball just hit the ground and stopped. 
and center fielder was able to just pick it up and just toss it in to the second baseman, holding Malone on first. And now the lead up batter up, up to bat number 18, March Colvanez. With uh, Bill Malone, the pitcher, leading off from first base, Colvanez is up for his first pitch. Kind of swung with just his arms on that outside pitch for strike one. Malone still leading off from first. The next pitch from Jones. That was right down the pipe, and he took a big cut at it, and he missed for strike two. The count now, no balls and two strikes to March Colvanez here in the top of the third inning. Bill Malone leading off from first, and now the pitch from Jones. Malone goes on the pitch, and he strikes him out on that pitch, so the runner going to second base doesn't really count. That's going to be the third out for the Bruce Trojans. And we'll give you a quick rundown of our sponsors once again. Bruce Telephone Company, Warehouser, Step Saver Pharmacy, Wixie Big Star and Bruce, Kathy's Cozy Kitchen of Pittsburgh, Bruce Family Medical Center, Fred's Pharmacy, Kellwood Company, Factory Outlet, Parker Brothers Trucking, TDS Telecom, Calhoun Apparel, Bruce Furniture's a Klausner Corporation. And Adam, as you've seen this game, really not a lot of excitement in this game. Both teams just hitting grounders and letting the defense work. Really been a defensive game here. Haven't had a lot of offensive explosion from either team. As you can see by the score, uh, still 0-0 zero zero here in the bottom of the third. You also have to keep in mind, this is a JV game, so the kids are lear still learning. They're young, basically 7th, 8th graders. But Calhoun City is a young team. They start some of the 8th graders on their main squad. So, you know, Really truly, this is going to be the best thing for Calhoun City in the long run. If they, if they stay together and just work at it together, they're going to end up being more in sync. It's going to work out for them in the long run when they do get to be 11th and 12th graders. Definitely, definitely. Uh, teams working together and uh, coming up through the program together. Uh, players that know each other and know what each other are thinking uh, during the game, that really helps out a team uh, work together as a team, as, as one unit. Uh, so definitely, they'll probably be pretty good if they all stay together uh, through the years. and when they start getting a little bit older, uh, keep learning the game, be students of the game, they're, they're going to be pretty good. Bill Malone still on the mound for the Trojans. Here about to start the bottom of third inning. This is the Wildcats taking a few practice swings over here in the batter's box on deck circle. The catcher. Going to throw that one down, but wild pitch. Up to bat first for the Wildcats in the bottom of third is going to be number 26, Kyle Spivey. It's going to be his first at bat of the game. As we have Bill Malone on the mound. Spivey up to bat. He's got a close stance. And the first pitch is a high fastball for a ball one. Spivey getting signed, stepping out of the box, gets back in. Malone getting the sign for the catcher. And the pitch. Another high fastball inside this time for ball two. Yeah, we talked about earlier Malone, all of his pitches going down low. It seems like he's trying to overcorrect it now, just all of them staying up high. Yep. I think he's trying to get more batters to strike out instead of hitting all those grounders. There was another low one we were just talking about. Caught us on a bloop there, talking about throwing high pitches, and then he's going to throw. A fastball straight down the middle of the Spivey. The count now, two balls and one strike. Just about the same pitch. Spivey takes kind of a half-hearted cut at that one. The count now, two balls and two strikes. Two balls and two strikes here. You really, pitcher just gets to choose, you know, usually going to be a breaking pitch. And there it was, a high curve ball for ball three. Full count, the pitcher's got to come with it right here. Yeah, I'm looking for Malone probably just to do that little sort of little sidearm pitch you saw already getting for the strike. Just sort of throw it Bobby's in there. has got a battle here with two strikes. That was a curveball outside. Tried to get him to chase that one. Spivey gets the base on balls. I believe that's the first walk of the game we've seen. Up next is going to be number two, Demetrius Brown. With Spivey on first. Malone with the pitch. He shows the bunt, tries to lay it down, but it was a uh, not a, not a really good pitch. So he 
couldn't get that bunt down to move the runner over to second. It's going to be one strike on Brown. Just about the same pitch, strike inside corner as 5e gets back to first base from the throw from the catcher. Demetrius with 0-2 really has got a battle now. He's really just got to put the ball in play here. He can't. You don't want to strike out. He's got a very close stance. I don't think I've ever seen a stance that close. He fouls that pitch off. That's a good way to battle. Really that time he shouldn't really swung at that ball as he had to step back basically almost to the edge of the box just to make contact. He's got a very close stance. I don't see how he could see the pitcher, but you know, whatever's comfortable for a player is the best thing. That ball low and in the dirt. It's going to be ball one. The count now, one ball and two strikes to Demetrius Brown here in the bottom of the third inning. Got Kyle Spivey leading off first base. And the pitcher for the Trojans is going to be Bill Malone. Spivey leads off in the pitch for Malone. Brown takes a cut at it and strikes out. It's going to be the first out here for the Wildcats. Up next is going to be number. I didn't catch that. Was that 13? Rob Hollis, a lefty. Shows the bunt. He goes for it. It's going to be strike one. That's been a lot of times today that Cotton City showed the bunt off and on. Really, when you have a runner on first base, you're either going to call hit and run or, or bunt and run or something, trying to get that runner to move over. See, he's trying to bunt again. He's trying to get that runner to move over to second base, put him in scoring position. The count now two strikes to Rob Hollis. Now with two strikes, you can't bunt. You just choke up, spread your feet out in battle, try and put the ball in play, move the runner up. He's trying to bunt again. Strikes out on bunts, three straight bunts. The second strikeout in a row. For Bill Malone. <laughs> Up next is going to be the pitcher, number 24, Jones, Parker Jones. He's another lefty. Batting left, he must bat switch. He fouls the first pitch back to the screen. It's going to be the first strike on Parker Jones. We got two outs. As you can see, the team's not really worried about bunting now with two outs because even if you bunt and move the runner over, you're going to get out at first usually. As the cardinal rule for a team who bunts, the defense needs to get at least one out. Here with two outs in the bottom of the third, one strike to Parker Jones and the pitch. That's going to be an outside fastball. Just caught the corner and throw down to second. It's five and moves on to second with a stolen base. Jones now, two strikes. Cuts one and uh, fouls it off to the left side over here in the grass. The count's going to stay 0-2 to Parker Jones with Spivey on second base in scoring position. Just waiting for his teammate to get a base hit and hit him in to home. Bill Malone on the mound thinking about it. Gets the sign for the catcher. And the pitch. He takes a cut at that one, hits it to the left field. The Taylor. Left fielder can't handle it. Spivey's rounding third. He's coming in. The throw from the left fielder is cut off. They throw to second, and Jones is safe at second. So they get a base hit from Parker Jones to score Kyle Spivey here in the bottom of the third. It's going to be the first run of the game. You know, as long as it's been taking them to warm up, that could just about do it there for the Wildcats because they're taking a lot of time in between here. And of course, you know, JV's game's got a time limit of an hour, I do believe. Definitely going to be a low scoring game with the time limit and the amount of grounders hit by both teams. The first pitch from Malone is a strike to number 16, Josh Ferguson. Hey, how doing? Next pitch. Hi, he's Jones is going to third. A throw is in the dirt. And the third baseman cannot come up with it. Jones go, moves over to third. One step closer to the plate. Now 16. Josh Ferguson. All he has to do is get a base hit and score another run. Two outs here at the bottom of third inning. Josh Ferguson of the Calhoun City Wildcats up to bat. 
Parker Jones, the pitcher for Calhoun City on third base. And pitching for the Trojans is going to be number five, Bill Malone. And the next pitch. It's a high fastball. Oh, a strike call. That's going to be strike two. The count now one ball and two strikes. That was a questionable call on that pitch. So this is a little high outside to me. Of course, we got the view from behind here, and Coach Logan's got the view from behind the pitcher. So that may be just a little disadvantage. The next pitch, low and in the dirt, goes past the catcher to the screen. Jones is going to try and score. The throw over Malone's head, and Jones scores. The score is now 2 to 0 by the Wildcats leading the Trojans 2 to 0 in the bottom of the third. That was really a, a pitching error on Malone there, just a low pitch in the dirt, to, and a catcher unable to block the pitch up and allowed that run to score. Josh Ferguson. The fastball outside. The count is full now. Two outs to the bottom of third inning. Full count. Wildcats up by two. Josh Ferguson steps in. Malone with the sign from the catcher. And the pitch. Ferguson takes a cut at it, fouls it off into the catcher's glove for a strike three and the third out in the bottom of the third. So the Calhoun Cities gets two runs off one hit and one error in the bottom of the third inning. Now uh, with that, we're going to go to the break before we start the fourth inning here with your contest between Calhoun City and Bruce. All right. And we're back here with the top of the fourth inning between your Calhoun City Wildcats and Bruce Trojans. Up first uh, in the top of the fourth is going to be number 16 for the Trojans. Uh, it's going to be Spencer Kelly. Spencer Kelly. Excuse He's been at, at bat once without a hit. First pitch, a uh, low curveball in the dirt. Blocked up by the catcher. That's going to be ball one. The count one ball, no strikes to Spencer Kelly. Yeah, Get the sign from the coach. This is going to be a little hard pitching duel right here. Spencer's a little guy, you know, a little strike zone for the pitcher to throw to. Kind of a look like a change up, maybe a knuckleball on that pitch, a little inside. Spencer Kelly takes a cut at it and misses. Gonna make the count one ball and one strike. My coach used to always tell me if you get a short guy out there, just rear back and throw strike fastballs right down the middle every time. Make them chase him, make him want to hit him. Of course, as we said, he's got a little small strike zone, so it's going to be hard to throw to him. Another inside pitch, he pops it up. Caught by the shortstop for the first out in the top of the fourth. Up next for the Trojans is going to be number 50. Number 50 is Casey Denton. He's been at bat once without a hit. Deaton steps in. Jones getting the sign for the catcher. And the pitch. A high pitch, and Deaton takes a swing at it for strike one. Tell you what, Deaton's a tall fella, you know, one of those people that you really don't have to swing that hard. He's just got the, I guess you could say, velocity behind his swing, being as tall as he is and stuff, that actually be able to put a lot of power behind it. He swings at a very high pitch and grounds it to the shortstop, who bobbles the ball, tries to throw him out at first, and the first baseman scoops the ball, but he's safe. We're going to give him a, he'll get on the air on that one. It was going to be close, but we'll all get I was, that's a close call there. You never know if the shortstop would have came up with that. Number seven up to bat, who is? That's going to be Marshall Bailey. Marshall Bailey has been at the, at the plate once and has not yet to get a hit. As Deaton at first. And Parker Jones pitching for the Wildcats. Bailey steps into the box. Jones with the sign from the catcher. Checks the runner at first, and the pitch. He swings at it, grounds the pitcher. He's going to throw it to second. A bad throw. Bailey gets on on a fielder's choice, and Deaton is safe at second because of the throwing error by the pitcher. Yeah, he just should have come up and just tried to throw it easy that time. Looks like a little bit of Wolders. Wolders having a problem like that last night in the Braves ball game is he had an easy out for the third out, just threw it over the first baseman head as a run scored for the Braves last night. That just goes to show you here in this 
level, high school and junior high level baseball. You put the ball in play, good things are going to eventually happen for you. That's number 14, hits a shot into the right field gap. Right fielder back to field the ball. Deaton rounding third, coming home. The throw misses the cut, and Deaton scores easily. Brad Logan, he is two for two on the day, really hitting the ball well and hard. As Bailey moves to third, now we've got a first and third split. See what the defense decides to do on this first and third split. With That's Bailey at third, and... It's going to be Brad Logan Brad at first, Logan at and first. Matt Fulton up to bat. Coach getting a little irate with his players over here. Apparently they weren't checking the sign before getting their lead. The split, and he's going to fake the third and try and pick the first. Almost fooled Logan. Matt Fulton at the bat with the first and third split. And the pitch from Jones. Logan steals, and he's going to make the second because the catcher did not throw down the second. That's sort of a smart move there by the catcher. You know, he hasn't had very good accuracy today. Throwing to second, he's already threw one into the outfield. So that's a good, that's a good play there by the catcher. You don't give up anything by letting that man move to second. All I do is get some outs. He swings at a very inside pitch and pops it high to the left field. Left fielder's going to catch it. The runner tags at third and is going to score at home. As Barry Logan moves to third base. Marshall and Bailey come in for Marshall the score. Scores. So that's tying your ball game there in the fourth, two to two. And like I said, you just put the ball in play and things are going to happen at this level. And Bruce has done a great job of that, taking advantage of Callan City mistakes. Kobe Hillhouse is up to bat. He's been at the plate once, has not yet, to get a hit also. On the pitch from Jones to Hillhouse. Oh, he swings at that outside pitch, bloops it over the first baseman. That's going to be a base hit, and Barry Logan's going to score. Now they they have come up with the lead. The Trojans now with the lead 3-2 to two over the Wildcats. As Hillhouse gets a little blue base hit over the first baseman for his first hit of the game as he stands for first base. So we was, going, we was talking about earlier how slow the scoring was going to be. It's already 3-2. to two. Bruce's just come back really quick. Both teams just decided they were going to start swinging at the pitches, put the ball in play, get some things to happen. A pickoff move to first. And he's safe. Parker Jones getting signed for the catcher. Set. And the pitch. Outside. I believe he called he it a strike, a strike, but it looked like it was a little way outside. It looked outside. like it was a little bit outside there. But Parker Jones said. Inside pitch on that one. Catcher didn't even see that. And number 15, Hillhouse is going to move to second base. The count now, one ball and one strike to number eight, Wiley Ferguson. There again, we're talking about Bruce taking advantage of the mistakes by Collin City as Hillhouse was able to advance to second base on that fast ball. Two outs here in the top of the fourth. Oh, a hit batsman. That's what you like to see there. When I, I played ball, I would take any pitch that got near me, I'd let it hit me. You always got to take one for the team, get yourself on base. You get more runners on the base, you're liable to score more runs. That's one thing Coach likes to see, sacrifice for the team in any sport, really and truly, as number eight, Wally Ferguson advances. Takes, takes the pitch into his leg and advances to first base with runners now on first and second. Catcher taking a little time to get ready there, having to take off his gear is Craig Dixon. He's been at bat once today and has not got a hit. Two outs, top of the fourth inning. Craig Dixon up to bat with runners at first and second. And the pitch from Parker Jones for the Wildcats. It's a strike right there. Right down the pipe, that was a strike. Always got to be aggressive on first pitch. You see a first pitch fastball coming down the middle, you want to rip it. You want want to be tentative in the batter's box. Always be aggressive. And now the second pitch with the count, no balls and one strike from Parker Jones. 
That's an outside pitch in the dirt. Gets by the catcher to the screen, and the runners will advance to second and third. Now with runners in scoring position, Dixon is just looking to get a base hit anywhere to score. At least he's going to score at least one run on the base hit, possibly two if it's far enough. You know, it really looked like, looked like that time Morris was just getting tired of that pass ball after pass ball as he just sort of half-hearted jogged back there to get the ball. And the pitch almost hit Dixon. He leans back and just forgot to get his bat down. It just goes off the bat handle for a foul ball. If he'd have got that bat down, it probably would have been another hit batsman. He would have been able to move up to first base. I believe that time the ball ricocheted off the butt of his bat and uh, hit more in the hand as he come up shaking it. So we see Jones losing a little bit of control here in the top of the fourth inning. Another high pitch over Dixon's head. The count now is going to be two balls and two strikes. Jones losing a little bit of control here. Top of the fourth. He's going to try and get this last out to let his team get back in and start batting again. And the pitch right down the middle. Dixon is going to rip it. Fly ball. It's too high. And the left fielder makes the circus catch to retire the side in the top of the fourth. Tell you what, you heard a lot of people take a deep breath that time, or a gasp, as you could say, when he heard that contact come off the bat as it was hit hard into left field. And with that, I believe we're going to take a break, and we'll be back after this. And we're back here. I believe it's going to be bottom of the fourth. Bill Malone on the mound. Malone has four strikeouts, one walk, and three hits on the day. Up to bat for the Wildcats is going to be number 10, Traveris Armstrong who has been at bat once with not a hit. He swings at the first pitch, kind of a high fastball, and fouls it back to the screen. The count now, no balls and one strike to Traveris Armstrong. That's a little better of a pitch that time by Malone as he was sort of, sort of still taking it high, but he was able to get the guy to foul the ball back, which would be strike number one. Armstrong steps in. Kind of a high pitch to Armstrong, who's not a very tall player, but still caught a strike. Count now, no balls and two strikes. The coach is calling the pitches here, just trying to get the players to hit, I think. Having a very large strike zone. Pitch hits Traveris in the hip, who did a good job not even trying to get out of the way. So he gets another, he gets on base. That's going to help his on base percentage. Up next for the Wildcats, number 17, David Arkberry who's been up to bat once and is 0 for 1 on the evening. Gets a sign from the coach as Traveris Armstrong at first. You know, Malone should have a little bit better success on Artberry here as he's a tall, taller batter, and Malone sort of throwing up a little bit higher should be able to get in the strike zone. Here with a runner on first, you're just looking to move the batter over to second any way you can, hit and run, butt and run. There goes the runner, and the throw, the catcher mishandles the pitch and Traveris is able to go to second easily. So now we've got a runner in scoring position for number 17, David Artberry. Put the ball in play and hopefully score a run on this pitch. The count, one ball and no strikes to Artberry. He swings at a low fastball, hits it to the shortstop. It's a candy hopper over to first for the first out as Traveris moves to third base. That's a good solid throw that time by Matt Fulton. Sort of just scooped it up cleanly and just zipped it across to the first baseman. But as you did say, Collins City was able to get the man on third. Art Berry doing a good job to move the runner over. One step closer. Only got one out. Still got two outs to play with here for number 23. Who we still don't know who that is. Davin Jennings. Number 23 is Davin Jennings, a lefty up to bat with one ball. Another outside pitch for ball two. Malone seems to have a little bit of trouble with these left-handed players. He's trying to keep on the outside, get them to reach for something. But he's, again, as we said, he was having a little trouble throwing high. Now he's going back to throwing low again. Inside pitch. Catcher misses that one. Tavares is very speedy, and he gets into home plate. That's going to tie the game. Three to three now as the count is 3-0 to Davin Jennings. 3-0 now. He's, I'll be surprised if he swings at this pitch. I'll just, if I wouldn't, I wouldn't even, th if I was coach, I wouldn't even give him a sign. He, he would have to really, it ought to come really, automatic. It is automatic, really, with three, a count of 
you don't swing even if it's right there unless you have a very large lead in the game. Post Malone right now, he's a little struggling just to get find the strike zone. And there it was. We the count now. Three balls, one strike. Malone has done that all day, really, and truly he's gotten behind on the batter. He's able to come back, get him hit a ground ball or such, and get the easy out with his defense behind him. Another outside pitch, and Davin is going to move to first base, uh, being walked in five pitches. I've always wondered how pitchers have, struggle to throw strikes, but then when they get a 3 0 count, they can automatically throw one. It's kind of strange. Up to, bat, up to bat next is number 22, Josh Langston, who was one for one on this evening's campaign. As Davin Jenny leads off first. Langston. High fastball. Davin's going to go to second. The throw, one hopper, and Davin moves into second with the stolen base. Right now, I think both teams really truly have got a running mentality. They realize they can run on the catcher. The catcher's not really strong in this JV game. Langston getting signed from the coach with a runner at second base. We've got one out here in the bottom of the fourth inning. The score is tied 3-3 three to three between the Calhoun City Wildcats and the Bruce Trojans. The count to Langston, one ball, no strike. And the pitch from Malone. Inside, Langston takes a cut at it. The count now, one ball, one strike to Josh Langston. That's one thing Malone, he was, he was having success in. In the beginning of the ball game, he got pitcher, he got the batters just to swing at the bat. Really not making good solid contact on the ball, as you see there. As That was just a terrible throw that time Langston by Craig Langston takes a cut Dixon. at that one, and the catcher tries to throw out. Jennings at third and makes a bad throw. Jennings scores. And yeah, that's going to be your ball game right there. Calhoun City comes back to win it on that arrow by Craig Dixon. So the JV Calhoun City Wildcats are going to take this first one home. Five Four to score. three.